the subject of the ballad, When You and I Were Young, Maggie, was Margaret, or Maggie Clark, who was born on the 14th of July, 1841, in the Canadian town of Glanford, about 12 miles south of Hamilton in Ontario. It was there Maggie met her future husband, George Washington Johnson, a young teacher and poet from Binbrook, a short distance from Glanford. They soon fell in love and began a courtship, the couple frequently taking day trips to the scenic Twenty Mile Creek, where Maggie's father, Joseph, had a sawmill. In mid-1864, George self-published a book of poems entitled Maple Leaves, which included When You and I Were Young, an endearing ode to his sweetheart from Glanford. A few months later, 21st of October, 1864, 25-year-old George married 23-year-old Maggie at Glanford Methodist Church. Alas, tragedy soon visited the home of the newlyweds, when, on the 12th of May, 1865, Margaret Clark Johnson died from tuberculosis. After being laid to rest at White Church Cemetery, not far from her birthplace, her grief-stricken husband left Glanford and returned to his hometown of Binbrook. George clearly saw merit in When You and I Were Young. So much so, he asked James Austin Butterfield if he would consider setting it to music, to which Butterfield agreed. Originally from Hertfordshire in England, Butterfield had been in America since 1856 and had established himself as a successful composer and choirmaster. The Johnson Butterfield composition was published in sheet music form in 1866 by Oliver Ditson and Co. of Boston under the new title When You and I Were Young Maggie. Interestingly, it included a memorable four line chorus which was not part of Johnson's original poem. Almost immediately, Canadians and Americans took the ballad to their hearts, and within four years it was being sung in concert halls across the Atlantic. Such was its popularity in Ireland. Readers often wrote to newspaper editors in Dublin, Cork and Belfast, asking them to supply the lyrics. This, for example, from the Dublin-based Irish Emerald, June. 1892. Dennis Cronin, Ashgrove, Queenstown, County Cork, would be much obliged to any reader for the words of When You and I Were Young, Maggie. A few weeks later, the same newspaper published yet another request for the ballad, this time from Dennis O'Donoghue, Lack West, Kilmill, County Clare. <laughs> So what became of George Washington Johnson? Following the death of Maggie, he immersed himself in academia, and in 1875 he was appointed principal of Hamilton Central School. He subsequently held the posts of Professor of Language at the University of Toronto and Professor of Latin at Cornell University. He died in 1917 in Pasadena, California. Three years later, 1920, John McCormack, the gifted tenor from Athlone, recorded When You and I Were Young, Maggie, for the Victrola label. And in 1926, the Irish dramatist Sean O'Casey used Butterfield's melody for his new song called Nora, which O'Casey incorporated into his play 
the plough and the stars. Rumours were now circulating that Maggie had its origins in the southern states of America. Not so. Not so at all, said Charles Orr McCullough, a historian based in Hamilton. On the 11th of July, 1934, the Belfast Telegraph discussed the contents of a letter which had been recently sent to its offices by McCullough, who was somewhat bemused to learn that car manufacturer Henry Ford was thinking of buying an old mill in Tennessee, because he was told that this was the mill mentioned in the ballad. Far from it, insisted McCullough, who made it clear that the mill was in fact located in Twenty Mile Creek, Ontario, and that Maggie was definitely not written by an American, but by a true-born Canadian. Another fox was let loose in the hen house of rumour when, on the 25th of November, 1981, Belfast Telegraph columnist Eddie McElwain reported that a Mr Keenan of Merino in Dublin had just announced that his uncle Thomas Patrick Keenan, also from Dublin, was the composer of When You and I Were Young, Maggie. Michael Wayne's column, headed Who Brought Maggie Into the Limelight, prompted an immediate response from two perplexed readers, the first of whom was Magnus Patton from Rosetta Park in Belfast. Dismissing Keenan's claim to authorship outright, Patton gave a lengthy history of George Washington Johnson, Maggie Clark and J. A. Butterfield and backed up his claims with dates, specific locations, and book titles. Ethna White of Hollywood, said Michael Wayne, agrees that Johnson and Butterfield were the geniuses behind the most fetching of ballads. For reasons best known to himself and his record company, in 1961, American crooner Perry Como decided to release a rollicking swing version of Maggie, but other versions, very much in a laid-back country style, have been recorded by singers such as Gene Autry, Slim Whitman, and Ireland's own Foster and Allen. And so ends the story behind When You and I Were Young Maggie. <laughs> I wander today to the hill, Maggie, to watch the scene below, the creak and the creaking old mill, Maggie, as we And 
join in the songs that were sung for we sang as contented as they They say I am feeble with age, Maggie. My steps are less brightly than then. My face is a well-written page, Maggie. But time alone. The pen. They say we are aged and grey, Maggie, as sprays by the white breakers flung. But to me, you're as fair. I were young when you and I were young.